Um, I'm on the uh, PC side of the room, but I'm doing a Steve Jobs, I guess. Um, my, my first joke has gone because it was about being at the end of the day. Um, so, um, I've got, I have got a slight complaint to make with the organisers. Um, in my contract, it did say I would be headlining. Um, I'm not quite sure why I've been pushed down. Anyway. Okay, so my, my slant today um, is coming from HE, because that's where I work. I work at the LSE, um, and it's about teachers. Miles asked the audience earlier how many teachers there were here, um, and there were quite a lot. So I'm not quite sure why I'm here, but here I am. Um, I'm going to talk about teachers and um, what we need to do uh, f from their perspective, kind of, to make the stuff we've been talking about today successful. Now, <coughs> I read somewhere recently that um, every good presentation should just try to say three things. So here are my three things. Where'd they go? They're there. They're on my screen. They've gone off that one. Anyway, they are. We have the technology, we have the capability. All we need is love. <laughs> I'm going to start with the first. Um, this is the stuff we've been talking about so far today. I'm not going to talk about that. Um, I think it's useful when thinking about technology in, in the future to think about technology now um, and what's going on at the moment. Um, many of your institutions will have a virtual learning environment. Um, these, learning, these virtual learning environments have lots of fantastic functionality and they don't always get used. Um, I, I must point out uh, for um, <coughs> employment purposes that it took me a long time to find this course on the LSE VLE yesterday. Um, there are many courses that do lots of wonderful things with learning technology and I know that. And I know there's lots of wonderful things but I'm talking about mainstream in my talk. The majority of people do not use their current technologies, educational technologies, in wonderful, innovative ways. And we need to remember that and need to think why. Okay. Second part of my talk um, is about we have the capability. And that part of the talk is about you. Okay, this room is chock-a-block with expertise, chock-a-block with expertise. We have programmers, we have uh, managers, we have IT specialists, we have educational technologists, we have teachers. There's a lot of expertise um, in this room. You know, I only know a small portion of people here. And you know, they are bright, intelligent people on the whole. <laughs> So I think if any teacher came into any of our places, we have the capability, with a, you know, with a great pedagogical idea, we have the ability to make that happen. One of the things I think we need to think about um, with um, capability and, and our role um, is uh, Glover's Dilemma. Now I imagine a couple of people have already Googled this. Somebody's probably tweeted it. And there's probably a couple of blog posts out there about it already. <laughs> Although I doubt it, because I've made this up. <laughs> Even Mr. Glover doesn't know about Glover's dilemma. Mr. Glover is a learning technologist um, in London. He's not here. Um, but some of his colleagues are, so he's going to know about this eventually, if he's not already watching somewhere in Second Life or something. Anyway, Glover's dilemma. This was um, a question put to us at a conference in London earlier this year, EduCamp London. If you get a chance to go to EduCamp London next year, then make sure you do. So it was a great day. Um, so should we be focusing on the leading edge or the trailing edge? Okay. Children, into groups. You have a minute at the most in groups of two or three to think about how much time at you and your institution spend on the innovators and how much time you spend on the mainstream and have you got the balance right. Off you go. Okay. Can I stop you there, please? Thank you very much. Um, it's a short presentation, so you need to shut up now. Um, please put your hands in the air if you think you spend too much time on the leading edge, the innovating side of things. 
Ah, one, two. Okay, I had no idea how that was going to go, but that's interesting. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Just to summarise where we're at so far, we've got the technology. It's going to keep coming. We'll always have the technology. Um, we have the capability. We have the capability to decide what's good for teaching, what's good for learning. We have the expertise. We could implement it. Oh, sorry. Ooh, ooh. Sorry, this is this is my quote. I hope you weren't that quick a reader. Does anybody know where my quote comes from? You all do now. Okay, my favourite show as a kid, so I just had to bring it up. Steve Austin will be that man. I just love that. Anyway, so moving on to the kind of main bit of my presentation, really. Um, we've got the technology, we've got the capability. There are lots of factors involved in the future of technology and education that will decide whether it's successful or not. Okay, lots of different factors. Um, and I wrote a blog post about this before um, the session on, on, the, on the blog, and two people were very kind enough to read it um, and comment on it. That's, thank you very much, honestly. Um, I want to focus on one of these, um, which is the teachers. Okay, they're all important, these factors, and I don't want to go into detail, but I want to talk about teachers. All we need is love. What do I mean by that? Well, I think there's a lack of desire and enthusiasm and a want for our teachers to engage with educational technology. And now that might be different in some sectors, I know, but as a whole, the mainstream, the main body of teachers, I don't see this enthusiasm and this desire for educational technologies. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, and you will have an opportunity to do so shortly. Why aren't they knocking on our doors? What are their thoughts on this? Interestingly, there's very, very little research on um, teachers' attitudes to teaching with technology. Very little. I did a quick, very scientific look yesterday. Um, and, for example, on the HEA um, website, there are stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of student attitudes, learner attitudes. Very, very little, one in the first 50 hits on staff attitudes to educational technology. So, why is this? Why don't the vast majority of people really get enthused and engage with it? Could this be the reason? Headline from earlier this summer. Not a great article, I have to say. I um, want to talk about smartphones. We've had a little conversation about smartphones already. <coughs> this is a survey earlier this year. Um, I just need to point out what we mean by staff in terms of this survey. This is LSE staff and PhD students based in academic departments. I've included the PhD students because at the LSE, a lot of the class seminar teachers are PhD students. So these are the teachers at my institution with a few administrators who are based in academic departments thrown in. No IT people, no library, and so on. 32% of them own smartphones. <coughs> in the UK, according to Ofcom, that's how many people own smartphones. These are the Luddites we're talking about. Twitter, LSE staff, 20% of LSE staff have at one time used Twitter. I was quite impressed by that. U.S. adults who've used Twitter, um, slightly earlier survey, 19%. Okay. Actually, it went up to 21% if you included people who are educated to a graduate level or, or above, which I think most of our academics are. <laughs> so what's my point? Well, my point simply is that you can't make these broad statements that academics and teachers are Luddites who don't like technology. They use technology. They use technology. It's not about technology. Um, some people say, particularly at institutions like ours, that it's all about research and they don't like teaching. That's nonsense as well. You talk to most lecturers, they're very passionate about teaching and about their students. So it's, it's not that either. Um, I did um, some research a, a while back for my dissertation on this. And one thing that always comes up, of course, is time. People don't have enough time to engage with educational technology. I have a problem with this. Everybody's time poor. Everybody has to make decisions about time. It's about priorities, not about time. What do you choose to spend 
your time on, the bit of time that you can choose to spend. You know, we all have to do certain things, but you'd always have some time that you can choose how to spend it. So I'd say that that's not a strong enough reason. They're just not choosing the extra bit of time, wherever that is, to use for educational technology. Why not? Why don't teachers love educational technology? Groups of three to five, two minutes, one or two key factors. Answer this question, and then you can all go home. Sorry, I'm not last. Answer this question. <laughs> Turn around and talk to the people behind you. Come on, let's have a little bit of a chat. OK, a lot of talk, which is always a good thing. Um, I'm sure some people are disagreeing with my basic um, argument, and that's fine. Um, now comes the part of the presentation that I've been dreading all day. Well, this isn't going to go well. Okay. You are going to submit your answer to me. OK, so in your groups, you need to decide what you're going to say. And one of you in your group needs to be ready to submit in one of these three ways what your answer is. OK, so I hope you can all see that. If not, stand up. OK, agree with, start to agree with your group. What you're going to say is your factor, who's going to do it. OK, let me stop you there. Is everybody ready to go? Are you all ready? Nah, you just need to wait. I'm getting you. This slide says prepare to submit. If I just read that out, it says prepare to submit. OK? The reason I'm getting you all ready is because I'm using a free tool, and only the first 30 answers count. OK, are you all ready? First 30 count. Bit of competition here. If anybody says hello, mum. <laughs> okay, confidence. Don't need it. Okay, the poll's still open, by the way, if 30 haven't come in. Read them, read them. I'm not going to read them out. You guys read them. They don't know the benefits yet. I do like that one. Yeah, teachers can't see the benefit. Okay, there may be some more, but it seems to be slowing up. seems to be slowing up. Okay. Thank you very much for that. If there are any more come in, what I will do is share them afterwards. I'll get a blog post up there or something. They're still coming in there, which is great. OK, how am I doing for time? I'm nearly at the end, so I'm going to stop you there. As I say, these will be made available afterwards. Um, let's move on. OK, so I'm coming to the end now. Um, and I've give, hopefully given you some things to think about, but I'm not giving you the answers, and it's impossible for me to do that. Um, in 20 minutes, and it's certainly going to be impossible for me to do that in 30 seconds now. But what we need to think about, I think, is how we create the love. Why, you know, we have these technologies, we have the capability, um, yet people aren't knocking our doors down on the whole, I think, to, to use this stuff. And why is that? Um, and I think the benefits is one key thing. Um, I think we don't know enough about, we don't know enough about our teachers, uh, with apologies to the teachers in the rooms. Um, their attitudes and maybe we don't always see what they want and we we think we know what they want they want to teach in a social constructive career in a fancy manner okay one final thing now this really really was supposed to be the last thing of the day because I was going to do my great prediction of what's coming next <sighs> Steve Jobs wasn't available for me to ask um, but I kind, of, I kind of, I don't know, if you're looking at this, I kind of see things getting bigger. <laughs> and I, I see some of the functionality being taken away. <laughs> if only somebody thought of a way of 
having a, I don't know, a keyboard or something, a hinge. Anyway. One day, your computer will be a big-ass table with pictures of other people's kids all over it. Instead of actually playing with your kids, you could just look at video of them playing by themselves. And you'll smile knowing you've only paid $10,000 to do it. And if your mom has $10,000 laying around her house that she has nothing to do with, she can get one too. And then you can send her a postcard for free. That's the power of Microsoft Surface. Now consider this. Instead of using one of today's more popular compact devices to get directions to where you're going, why not use a device the size of a small car to do the same job? In the future, getting tanked with your friends is going to be a whole... Never mind, never mind. I, I promised um, various people and Twitter that I wouldn't swear, but bugger. <laughs> okay, that's me done. Thank you very much. Go away and create some love.